And they said, well, what's new? What did you find out that we didn't know before? And of course, the big answers are uh, the, the first galaxies grew differently than we expected, and we don't know why their old predictions were wrong. What if the universe you learned about in school already happened once before? Consider this. For decades, we've pieced together a cosmic narrative, a grand story of creation and evolution. But sometimes, new data comes along that makes you question everything, making you wonder if our intuition has just been wrong almost all the time. The James Webb Space Telescope, a marvel of human ingenuity with its infrared eyes, is now staring so far back in time it's bumping into galaxies that look too grown up, too sophisticated for a cosmos that's supposedly only 13.8 billion years old. It's not just a little off, it's like finding a fully developed metropolis where only a tiny hamlet should exist. Some researchers, perhaps a bit quietly, admit the numbers feel like a profound case of cosmic identity theft. We're talking about mature, Milky Way-sized cities of stars, bustling with activity, sitting precisely where our standard models predict only the faintest, most nascent collections of gas and dust. It's a profound challenge to our understanding of the early universe, prompting us to ask, did these galaxies simply grow at an impossible rate? Or is there something fundamentally different about the cosmic timeline we've been clinging to? Today, we follow the data, not the dogma, and ask the question no textbook put on the final exam. Did the Big Bang bang again? For nearly a century, the cosmic plot was elegantly simple. Space, time, and matter, we were taught, erupted in a hot, dense burst approximately 13.8 billion years ago. This moment, the Big Bang, marked the beginning of everything we know. Following this initial explosion, particles cooled, gas began to clump together, and the first stars ignited a few hundred million years later. From these humble beginnings, galaxies were thought to bulk up slowly, gradually accumulating mass through mergers and steady, patient starbirth over eons. This is the bedrock of our standard cosmological model known as Lambda CDM. Lambda CDM, or the Lambda Cold Dark Matter Model, is our prevailing theoretical framework. It posits a universe dominated by dark energy, Lambda, driving its accelerating expansion, and cold dark matter providing the gravitational scaffolding for structure formation. This model even prints a detailed timeline, a sort of cosmic instruction manual. It explicitly states that no monster galaxies, no systems comparable to our own Milky Way should have formed before about one billion years post Big Bang. Think of it like a baking recipe, a very precise one for the universe itself. If you open the oven at minute three and find a fully frosted, multi-tiered wedding cake ready for serving, something is profoundly off with either your timer, your ingredients, or your understanding of the baking process. We're pretty confident that we don't know what we're going to find when we peek into the cosmic oven with Webb. Now, according to this standard cosmological model, which says that about 14 billion years ago, the entire observable universe and everything beyond it that we can't see would have compressed into a tiny infinite point we call the singularity. Actually, no. I mean, that would be true if the universe is finite. But wait, if the universe is infinite, and it kind of looks like it is, then it was always infinite. So the Big Bang would have happened literally everywhere. This means that the first galaxies did not form in any particular region of space. They formed everywhere in the universe, even beyond the observable universe that we cannot see. It seems as if matter came into existence everywhere in the universe at a particular time, and the cosmic microwave background radiation that we see everywhere in the universe is the first light of matter coming from every direction in the universe so this suggests that the singularity is not the point from which everything came, but rather an infinite place where everything everywhere came into existence about 13.8 billion years ago, and that in itself is a mind-bending thought. Enter Webb, the James Webb Space Telescope. 
with its infrared eyes chilled to temperatures colder than space itself, it began snapping pictures of the universe in 2022. Unlike its predecessor, Hubble, Webb sees an infrared, allowing it to peer through dust and gas and, crucially, to capture the light from the most distant red-shifted objects. One of its early, groundbreaking targets was the ultra-deep field, a patch of sky that promised to reveal the universe's infancy. We were looking for cosmic babies. What Webb found was utterly astonishing. At a redshift of Z approximately 14.4, meaning the light from these objects left the scene only about 290 million years after the presumed beginning of the universe, astronomers expected to see faint smudges, the embryonic forms of galaxies just starting to coalesce. Instead, they got Jade's GS Z14. This wasn't a smudge. This was a fully formed system boasting an estimated 1 billion stars, rich in heavy elements, exhibiting orderly rotation, and, to top it all off, housing a supermassive black hole thousands of times heftier than Sagittarius A, the one lurking at the center of our own Milky Way. And Jade C14 isn't an anomaly. Multiply that discovery by dozens. Webb has identified galaxies up to redshift 20, that's just about 200 million years post-Big Bang, that look already middle-aged. We're talking about galaxies that show signs of intense starburst activity and surprising maturity at epochs when our models predict they should barely be forming. For example, the Maisie's galaxy, one of the most distant ever discovered, existed just 450 million years after the Big Bang, already exhibiting significant structure. More recently, scientists have even identified candidate high-redshift galaxies like F200 DB045 with an estimated redshift of approximately Z equals 20.4, corresponding to a mere 168 million years after the Big Bang. If confirmed, this would push the boundaries of what's possible even further. It's like digging in 500 million year old rock, and instead of finding ancient fossils, you unearth a fully functional iPhone. It simply shouldn't be there. Now, why is this such a problem for our cosmic rulebook? Lambda CDM, our trusted standard model, dictates a very specific, time-consuming process for galaxy formation. It says you need time to collapse cold dark matter halos big enough to hold lots of gas. Dark matter, though invisible, provides the gravitational scaffolding for structure formation. It takes significant time for these diffuse dark matter particles to clump together into dense enough halos to gravitationally attract vast quantities of ordinary gas. Let that gas cool without blasting it back out with supernova feedback. Once gas falls into these halos, it needs to cool down to form stars. But early massive stars burn fast and furious, exploding as supernova. These explosions release immense energy, which can heat and expel gas from the nascent galaxy, effectively slowing or even halting star formation. It's a delicate balance that requires time. Merge halos hierarchically until something Milky Way mass appears. Galaxies aren't born fully formed, they grow through a hierarchical process, merging with smaller galaxies and absorbing their gas and stars. To build a system as massive as our Milky Way, you need countless mergers, each taking millions of years. Run the numbers, crunch the simulations, and that entire process, from the first dark matter fluctuations to a mature Milky Way-sized galaxy, should take closer to a billion years, not two or three hundred million. Yet Webb keeps finding bright, chemically enriched systems vibrant with star formation before the window for their existence should even begin to open. This means either the cosmic stopwatch is wildly inaccurate, or the baking recipe for the universe is missing some crucial, perhaps even magical, ingredients. So, if our observations are challenging the rulebook, what are the potential fixes? Option one, perhaps our theorists simply underestimated early star formation. Maybe the universe found a way to be far more efficient than we imagined. Perhaps pockets of pristine hydrogen and helium gas, the raw materials of the early universe, cooled super efficiently through previously underestimated molecular hydrogen pathways. This would allow stars to ignite in a cosmic flash mob, forming much faster and in greater numbers than expected. 
then gravity could have clumped these nascent stellar populations at breakneck speed driven by denser than expected regions. And maybe, just maybe, intense radiation pressure from these early massive stars, instead of dispersing new gas, somehow compressed it, fueling even more rapid star formation. Computer simulations, when nudged and tweaked to their absolute limits, can reproduce some massive galaxies at early times. But this often requires cranking the star formation efficiency to the very edge of credibility, sometimes assuming nearly 100% of available gas turns into stars, which is, scientifically speaking, very hard, which is the scientific term for impossible. Even then, the black hole obesity problem remains. How do you get 10 to the 9 solar mass black holes, billions of times the mass of our own sun, to coalesce so incredibly fast within a few hundred million years. Our current theories struggle. Could it be frequent mergers of smaller black holes happening much faster than we thought? Or perhaps super Eddington feeding, where black holes gobble up matter at rates far exceeding their theoretical limits? But wait, here's where it gets really intriguing. The trouble is, these alternative models face significant hurdles. We have other robust cosmological observations that neatly match the Lambda CDM age of 13.8 billion years. For instance, we observe supernovae dilation, where distant supernovae appear to unfold more slowly due to the stretching of space-time. This phenomenon is a direct consequence of an expanding universe and matches our current age estimates perfectly. Then there are the cosmic microwave background acoustic peaks, the subtle temperature variations in the afterglow of the Big Bang, which provide a precise ruler for the universe's age and geometry. Both these pillars of modern cosmology neatly align with the 13.8 billion year timeline. Kicking the can uphill by proposing an older universe requires rewriting much else that works incredibly well within our current understanding. Still, a small but vocal cadre of researchers keeps the idea alive, arguing that our fundamental dark energy assumptions, which dictate the expansion rate, might be biasing our cosmic dating. Now, for the most radical option, the one that truly challenges our foundational understanding, option three, what if the Big Bang was not the first? What if our universe is just one chapter in an infinitely unfolding cosmic story? This is where Roger Penrose's Conformal Cyclic Cosmology, or CCC, comes into play. Penrose proposes a universe composed of an infinite sequence of eons, each one following another. Under this mind-bending theory, each eon begins with a Big Bang-like event and eventually ends in a state of heat death. In this distant future epoch, only entropy and evaporated black holes would remain. But here's the clever part. Because such a future has no meaningful time or distance scale, no massive particles, no way to measure anything, its geometry can mathematically scale into the hot, smooth, low entropy beginning of the next eon. It's like the universe resets itself, with the end of one becoming the beginning of another. Penrose and his collaborators have even claimed to find evidence for this in our own cosmic backyard. They point to faint, ring-like patterns in the cosmic microwave background maps, which they argue could be the gravitational echoes or hawking points of supermassive black hole collisions that occurred in the previous eon. If true, the galaxy's web seas might not just be old for our eon, but rather cosmic fossils from the previous cycle, co-evolved through an earlier lifetime, simply reappearing in our current epoch. Of course, mainstream cosmologists counter that those sky patterns disappear with better statistics or can be explained by other phenomena. Yet, the idea persists, perhaps because it offers the most poetic and elegant fix to Webb's impossible galaxies. The universe is old because it's eternally repeating. As we just find that our universe appears to be infinite in size, it's plausible that its age could also be infinite. What we perceive as the Big Bang may have just been a particular moment in the evolution of this always existing causal set, not a true beginning. However, there is more research needed. 
it remains uncertain whether this notion of an eternal universe without a beginning can align with our current scientific theories to effectively unfold the intricate unfolding of events during the Big Bang. So, what's the official word from the scientific establishment, the guardians of the cosmic rulebook? NASA press releases quite understandably stress that the Big Bang framework is not overturned. The prevailing message is that only galaxy formation speed needs some tweaking, perhaps a bit of fine-tuning. Peer review papers echo this refrain, suggesting we need to revise our understanding of baryon physics, update our star formation recipes, and refine our models of feedback mechanisms like those from supernovae. The goal, they assert, is to keep the 13.8 billion year spine of our cosmic story intact. But here's the interesting thing, and perhaps a subtle hint of unease. When theorists start invoking the phrase unknown new physics to explain away discrepancies, historians of science remember the last time that phrase prefaced a paradigm shift. Every scientific revolution, after all, begins as a rounding error, a small anomaly that grows into an undeniable challenge. We're pretty confident that we don't know what we're going to find, but we do know that these unexpected discoveries are pushing the boundaries of our knowledge. This cosmic detective story is only just beginning. Webb is just warming up, continuing its groundbreaking observations. Upcoming deep fields will survey wider patches of the early universe, gathering spectra for thousands of these mysterious early galaxies. This will give us a much more comprehensive census of what was truly out there, and it's not just Webb. The Roman Space Telescope, slated for launch later this decade, will add wide-angle census data, providing an even broader view of early galaxy distribution. If the tally of unexpectedly mature galaxies keeps rising, if we continue to find more and more wedding cakes baked in three minutes, then Occam's razor, the principle that the simplest explanation is usually the best, may very well swing toward the two simplest variables left, age and repetition. Either the universe is older than we think, or this isn't its first rodeo. Until then, astronomers live in a fascinating tension, thrilled by the discoveries, uneasy about the implications, and constantly rewriting their lecture notes in pencil. Curious how many more impossible sightings will drop before textbooks finally get reprinted? Smash subscribe, ring the bell, and ride the data stream with us as we explore the universe's most profound mysteries. Webb's ancient galaxies don't just nudge the goalposts. They fundamentally ask whether the field of play is even the right shape. They challenge us to reconsider our deepest assumptions about cosmic evolution, pushing us to the very edge of our understanding. Whether the ultimate fix is faster astrophysics, slower cosmic clocks, or the echoes of past cosmic lives, one thing is for sure, the universe loves to surprise its residents. Maybe we're living in season two of a show that never really ends. Each reboot keeps the props, but shuffles the script. Keep watching the skies, the reruns might be live, and they're proving to be more captivating than any new release.